I'm Kat and I play red. This is one of those weeks we're going to go back in time. I need to come up with some sort of fancy name. Um, we are making a point of looking at some older games this year. This is one of them. Today we are looking at Murano by Ingram Marks Brand. Um, this copy is Mayfair, I think it's Lookout Spiel um, that are now doing it. Everyone knows Inca and Marcos from the Exit Games, or maybe even Village, um, which has got a reprint coming out, or Raja of the Ganges. Not enough people talk about Murano, so we're going to. Let's have a look at it. Murano seeks the most glorious of merchants. There is a lot going on in the Venetian Lagoon. Glassblowers are creating breathtaking pieces of art which are sold to discerning customers by the local shops. Collect the most victory points and become the most prestigious businessman of this island renowned for its glassblowing. Some of your VPs will come from buildings but most will be scored from your character cards. During the course of the game, you will determine what you score points for by collecting specific cards. At the end of the game, you will assign those cards to the islands that score the highest for them. Play goes round the table in clockwise order. In your turn, you will either choose an action space you can reach with one of the eight boats, or you can pass and take one gold. You can carry out an action, firstly, if it isn't occupied by another ship, and if it can be reached without passing through another ship. You can move a ship any number of spaces, so I could move this one around to here but it cannot enter a space with another ship. However, let's pop this back, if other ships are in the way, you can pay gold to move them. You can move as many ships as you want, as long as you have the cash to do so. Your first ship movement costs nothing, so moving this guy here costs me nothing. However, if I wanted to do this action, I could pay one gold. So my first ship movement is nothing. My second ship movement costs me one gold. If I wanted to move another ship, it would cost me two and another ship would cost me three. So the cost increases as you move more and more ships. Obviously, it's not something you want to be doing, but you have to balance out the need for certain spots versus your need for gold. Alternatively, you can just move a single ship, not take the action and take one coin. So let's have a look at the action spaces available on the main board here. First, because it's easiest, take two coins, simple. Then let's have a look at the buildings. So here, we're going to pay one gold and take a glass factory. Now, all of the glass factories are identical. You just take the one off the top. The same thing is true for the special buildings. The special buildings here cost you two gold and you just take the top one off the deck. The other two types of buildings are the shop spaces and there's two spots, there's one here and one up here. You can pay two gold to either take the top one off the stack or you can pay four gold to look through the stack and take one of your choice. The same applies for the palaces. There's one spot here, one on the other side of the board. You can pay two gold to take the top one or pay four gold to search through the stack and find a tile you want. Now, whenever you buy building tiles, they're going to just sit 
in front of you for the time being. They don't actually go on the board, that's a different action. So all tiles you buy just sit in front of you. Let's have a look at some of the slightly more tricky spots. So here we go. This is going to be placing your gondoliers. Now you start with five in your supply. You can pay, in fact there's the same spot here and here, you can pay two coins to place one on a spot of your matching colour. Now there's no red in this game so I'm playing white. Alternatively you can pay five coins to place one on any spot and you can have multiples but you're going to have to pay extra for that second one. So this one would cost me two to place, this one would cost me five. Down the bottom here we start with two of our gondoliers in the supply here. We can either take one and pop it in there and get free gold or you can take one out of here for free gold. Now the character cards that we spoke about that will give you the bulk of your points in this game you're going to gain from the spots here and there's two of them. Every time you draw cards you draw three from the deck and choose one to keep. Your first one will cost you one gold, your second one two, your third one three and so on. So the more cards you have the more expensive they're going to be. Building. Now this is where your tiles go on the board. So as I said before your tiles just let's take some of these just sit in front of you when you buy them. This action lets you build between one and three buildings. You can also take a street tile for free and place it which at the start of the game you're going to have to do. So let's take a street tile. Now the street tiles go onto these cobbled spaces here. Your buildings must go orthogonally adjacent to a street tile. So in later rounds you may not take street tiles but in the first round you're going to have to. This costs you nothing, you can place it wherever you want but you don't get points. Now I've got two tiles in my supply that I can place. I have a shop which I put a cube on and that is going to gain me two points as shown here. So two points and move that up. The third tile I'm going to build is going to be a glass factory. Again I pop a cube on it and that's going to gain me one point. So that would be my build action. Then we have the income space here. Now that is the only one of them on the board. So it can get quite busy around here with the boats. You're going to receive gold for the shops you have on one island. So you choose one island and score that. A shop can only sell to customers of the same colour. You can select up to three shops on the same island. So there is blue, red and black. And you'll receive one gold for each customer of the matching colour. So I have a black shop here and luckily enough I have a black customer. So here I'd get one coin. Um, let's have a look at some other, if there was a second black customer I'd gain two coins and so on. So the more shops you have with matching customers the more coins you're going to get for that income action. The last action you can take around the outside of the board is the production action which we're kind of looking at upside down. You can produce glass in the factories you've built and you can use as few or as many as you wish. However, 
each factory you use is going to produce dirt and noise and the local residents won't like it so it will cost you two points to do this action so if i were to produce in the one glass factory i'd have i lose two points and i get to draw glass gems out of the bag so i have one factory i'm going to produce one glass so that's the glass i've produced now again there are three colors of glass there's green red and blue once you've produced from your factories you can sell your glass so my one blue here would get me five coins however if i had two blue i'd get 12 if i had three i'd get 20. you can only ever make one sale for this action and all the beads must be the same color you can decide not to produce and to just sell your glass or you could choose to produce and not sell anything so that is all the actions on the outside of the board some of them are duplicated so there's two places you can buy shops there's two places you can build and so on. So keep an eye on which of those spaces are going to be available for you. So let's do some stuff. Oh, she says throwing her pieces around. First thing I'm going to do is go here and pay two gold to buy a special building. Now, the special buildings are all identical. On their own they do nothing however when you build them you're going to get a chance to have a look at some cards that give you abilities so we'll have a look at that in a minute the next action i'm going to take is going to be to get some customer cards so i have an idea oops of where i'm trying to go let's not cheat and start with those on the board so let's move this boat here and take some cards now i draw three my because it's my first card it costs me one coin all of these have different scoring abilities so let's have a look um two vps for each palace on your island that's quite nice um combined number of customers um two vps for each of your buildings and one for your opponents do you know for now I feel like this is the easiest to kind of head towards. So I'm going to put those back at the bottom of the deck and I'm going to pop this in front of me. Now it should go face down in a proper game. I'm actually going to put it face up to remind myself. So I need to look at getting some yellow buildings. Now this is where we start hitting jam. You'll notice the yellow building spot here is occupied and the yellow building here is occupied. So I could pay a gold to move this and then move the other one round, but I'm quite low on money at the moment. So what I'm going to do is move this two spaces and take two coins. Now the boats on the board always move in an anti clockwise direction you can't change the direction you can move them as far as you want but you cannot change the direction they're going in so my next action is going to be to take that yellow building so two coins and take a yellow tile so now i've got some tiles i want to look at building and luckily enough, there's a nice building spot here. So let's do that. I'm actually going to take one from the middle. Oh, great. Well, that's not very good. We're going to pop that somewhere. Let's pop it here. And I get to place the two tiles I have. Now, the palace here, I don't put a marker on it. It has a crest, and these are applicable for certain character cards. However, because it's a palace, when I play it, I get three points. So, move my marker up. 
and then I'm going to place my special building must be orthogonally adjacent to a street tile now as I said these give you no points however you get to draw three of these cards and pick one and all of these have rule breaking abilities so the guild hall here gives me vps every time i produce glass beads here on this spot this card just gives me five vps straight away and the assembly hall here means i can hire a new gondolier for one gold or dismiss one for five now that's quite nice at this stage of the game so i think i'm going to take that and these just go to the bottom of the deck so i take that and that goes in front of me face up that is a permanent rule changer for me for the rest of the game so if i was in need of some money now I could move this boat to here and sell one of these for five coins knowing I can get it back at a later date for just one so now I have some palaces and I want palaces for this character card I need to actually be able to score in that area so I'm going to move here and pay my two coins to move onto this island which means at the end of the game I can use this guy to score this card on that island so I need to get some more palaces on here to make that worthwhile the end of the game is triggered when two of these stacks are empty and you'd be surprised at how quickly that can happen Every other player will get one more turn. And in the last round, if you buy a building, you can place it immediately. You don't get to build three. It's more if I were to take one of these, I'd get to place that one tile straight away. So you shouldn't be left with tiles in your tableau in front of you at the end of the game. After everyone has had their final turn, it's time to score your character cards. Each character card needs a gondolier on a gondola. You cannot assign more than one card to the same gondolier. Reveal your cards one by one. Choose an island and move these guys off so you know you've scored them. So let's have a look at my cards. Now, this one was specific about the island so you'll notice in this little banner here it's got the name of a specific island so it must apply here so i need at least three shops or glassworks on this island to score 10 points this is this island and i indeed have more than three so i get 10 points and what we tend to do is take these off and put them on the card there so you know they've been scored and you can't score them again the card we looked at earlier two vps for every palace on the island so obviously we're going with this island here and this guy and we have three palaces so that will be six points and we'll pop that there and the final card I have here is four VPs for each shop selling to red customers. And I'm going to pick this island. And there are two shops selling to red customers. They're not my shops, but it doesn't matter in this case. So I get eight points. And again, I put these off and put them on the card. So we know they've scored you're then going to score one point for every gondolier that didn't score you anything so this guy here would get me one point if i'd had some on the board here that hadn't scored i'd get a point for them 
I don't get a point for those in the reserve. So anywhere else, one point here, nothing. The player with the most points then wins. Whilst gold is worth nothing for endgame scoring, if there is a tie, the win goes to the player with the most gold. That's Murano. Um, I know Inca and Marcus brand, um, people are talking about them a lot more because the exit games um, say there's a reprint of Village coming out maybe an Essen release this year. I know I've seen some of the final artwork for it. Um, but no one talks about this. And this is a great little game. I love this action selection rondelle kind of thing. I don't know what else to call it. I can't think of anything else that has this sort of action. Um, if you can, let me know in the comments. You need to get your character cards early so you've got some idea of what you're doing and there's so many of these um that you're not going to have the same game um this is actually the two to three player side which takes this island out the other side this island is available and there's just more space for more players we like this a lot um and it's a bit sad that it's one that's been relegated. So it's important that old games get some love too. Um, Murano, Inca and Marcus Brand, Lookout slash Mayfair Games. Um, check it out if you can. If you see it come up at Bring and Buy or on a Facebook group to buy, grab it. It's good. Hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching. If you did enjoy it, click like, subscribe and that stuff. You know what you're doing now. Um, come and say hello on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. I play red. I shall be at BGG Con Spring um, in about a week's time, I think. By the time this video goes out, I think it'll be about a week. So come and say hello. I can teach you more right now. Um, Hopefully see some of you then. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Bye.